Hi, hello, and welcome, or welcome back, I suppose. Like, on Tuesday, we are delving into my friend's collection, and today you are getting a spicy little 3-4-1 offer as I delve into three books by Junichiro Tanazaki. We'll be looking at Quicksand, Devils in the Daylight, and In Praise of shadows three very very different books but at the end of the day they are all unmistakably his part one quicksand translated by howard hibbert i'll be honest i don't actually usually read introductions especially if it's not by the author themselves mostly because they're kind of dry and i'm just super eager to get to the book itself but this one was super short and you know i didn't fully know what to expect going in this was the first one that i read of the three i am reviewing these in the order that i read them you better be being good okay you're just cleaning yourself Lily's been causing problems. There have been a few choice cuts. I close the door completely. I usually only close it too because she's been causing problems before filming. And I thought, right, she figured out how to open the door. She jumped up on the handle. She got in. Good for her. So now I'm just keeping an eye on her for being a little menace. You right, goblin? <laughs> anyway. Where was I? Yeah, I didn't really fully know what I was getting into. This was the first of the three that I read, and I kind of just wanted to ease myself in. I didn't want to rush in all in one go. Plus, like I said, I think I said, at the very least, I read it in my script, this was a short introduction, so why not? Kristen Rupenian, who did the interview... <laughs> Kristen Rupenian, who did the introduction and is probably best known for a cat person, is so so funny and just talks about classic literature in a way that feels so real i guess we often go into classic literature no let's try that again we often go into classic literature kind of unaware how sanitized they are when we talk about them in general conversation now the only way I know about Tanazaki is from my friend, who told me that there are some sordid details in some, but not all, of his books. Where are you going? Oh, you're in here now. Hello, Zelda. Yes, yeah, stare out of the window or get on the bed. Please be nice. Where are you going? You going to do a big jump? Beautiful work. The thing is, when I was hearing about Tanazaki, I was hearing it about the friend that I borrowed these books from. So I was aware that some, but not all, of his books have a kind of deviant element, shall we say. But I think generally within conversation, I don't know how often that will be being brought up. It's the same, she mentioned it, and I think I talk about it uh, later on in the video. I know that sounds silly, but I wrote the script earlier today. Anyway, you know, she brings up Moby Dick, which often gets really sanitised because it's like, oh, let, you know, they talk about the whole thing with Ahab. It makes sense. But Ishmael and the guy he meets before getting on the boat to see, like, Ahab's boat, there's real homoerotic tension there. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. I did a lot in my classes about that because i'm like i'm not skipping over this <laughs> i'm just saying anyway but it's why i try to talk about classic literature like when i review them i try to review it in a kind of similar way as i would review any other book i am these are roughly you know 90 100 years old but I'm going to review them like I would review any other book. I am aware that there are differences due to culture, Tanazaki being Japanese, due to time, like I said, 
there's been a huge amount of um I already said time. Yeah, time. There's been a huge amount of distance between us. All that sort of stuff. I am aware of that. I keep it in the back of my head. But, at the same time, were something written by somebody in Japan now, who, which is a very culturally influenced piece of work, which everything we write is culturally influenced, but overtly so, I would still have to have that sort of thing in the back of my head. So, I try to review classic literature as I would review anything else because I think that, on the whole, when we read classic literature, it should be for fun, first and foremost, rather than because you have to read classic literature because of cultural reasons. Though, the cultural reasons are obviously still significant, but... You shouldn't read Charles Dickens, for example, because you feel like you have to. You should because you think the story itself, because you think the story itself sounds interesting, right? But, but anyway, this little preamble about the introduction has gone on long enough. So let's actually talk about the book now. And I will say, I didn't go into this book completely blind. I just didn't know fully what to expect. I had ideas, but I didn't know intricate details of the plot. And I really did have expectations when I was going in. If you know anything about Tanazaki, because I'll tell you what, it's what I knew, you will know that he is undeniably incredibly horny a lot of the time. <laughs> He was a deviant little man, and you know what? I respect that, but I respect some of it. The other stuff that I've heard about, we'll get that possibly in a future review. But anyway, knowing that he was a little sordid deviant, it did have me going, oh no, because a central tenet of this story in particular is a relationship between two women. And we all know that generally, you know, there's whole memes about women written by men. And then that's, well, going to be doubled when you have a relationship there between two women. And then just the way that men generally don't understand how lesbians work for some reason. But expectations be damned. This book is, at times, achingly romantic. And despite having a male author, this book is, one, void of any kind of fetishization of the lesbian relationship. Two, an incredibly accurate depiction of not only a queer relationship, but a sort of difficult queer relationship this is at the end of the day a woman having an affair with a woman she is cheating on her husband and there's other stuff with like other men from the woman she's having an affair with and it's all it's very complicated but like <laughs> more than once i was More than once, I was so aware of this feeling that's like, I, so many of my friends are lesbians. I don't know how I've collected this little gaggle of them, but the way I read this and went, yeah, that sounds about right. And not in that kind of, oh my God, that's like, just like my friends. I'm like, yeah, they're thirsty like that. <laughs> like, the con there is shocking content within this, but it's kind of a it, it's a drama a, erring on the side of a thriller and <laughs> the shocking content within it is not ah lesbians it's ah what is wrong with these people particularly this one woman like have you considered therapy instead of being the way that you are but that's nothing to do with the fact that she is having a lesbian relationship it's just that she's a bit off 
you know, when Sonoko sees, sorry, just, yeah, when Sonoko sees Mitsuko's body for the first time, she sort of just has a bit of a breakdown, and she's like, you're too beautiful, and I can't fucking handle it, and I just looked at that and went, yeah, lesbians are like that. Like, I know a fair amount of lesbians who would see a beautiful woman and start crying. <laughs> It's true. And then this is... I can't remember the line off the top of my head, but... She's just like, you're too beautiful, I have to die. Like, listen. This book is about 100 years old, give or take, sort of, 5 to 10 years. But... He knew. Tanazaki knew. Hello, little creature. I was positively surprised by this book and found it remarkably easy to read despite age and translation two things that can make it incredibly difficult to read a book and i will say i found that in all of the books i found that in just that feeling of this is an incredibly easy book to read you would not think so much time has passed and bear in mind i mean i don't know how much language has changed in the last hundred years for you know Japanese in the way that it has with English. I don't know if there's a huge amount of change and obviously there's dialect stuff, but you know Languages move at different paces and rates and all that kind of stuff So obviously I don't know how much that has changed, but I also don't know how recently they've been translated. So it's just all of that stuff Can make it difficult, but these are incredibly easy to read as if I had not as if they had been only recently pulled from the shelf. So I think that's very nice. And I do think with all of them, I'm probably going to be getting myself my own copy. So there's that. Part two, Devils in the Daylight, translated by J. Keith Vincent. Like I said, all of these books are very different. And let me tell you this, this one is probably the most Tanazaki, by which I mean horny. <laughs> Listen, I read this in a haze over a span of maybe two, two and a half hours, and I was in awe. Yeah, sure, I was in awe of the incredible storytelling, especially the end. No spoilers, but ooh, I was gagged by that ending. But in truth, what awed me the most was the sheer level of horniness <laughs> present throughout. Like, Sonomura is just really out here. Like, no, 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 Takahashi, you don't understand. No, 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 no. But like, I know she's killed people. I know we've watched her dispose of a body, but have you considered that she's really hot? I'm going to go and find her, and I swear that it's all to do with this mystery and the crimes. I swear it's nothing to do with the fact that I'm desperate. <laughs> like, throughout, I was just here like, girl, you have to stop thinking with your... Please start thinking with your actual brain and not any other part of your anatomy, please. <laughs> it's an utterly mad book, but I do think it's my favourite of the three. Like, I read it really quickly, which is always a bonus for me. I mean, it's not anything to do with the book itself. I mean, you know, it's just short. But I always kind of appreciate when I can read a book quickly, just because of despite the fact that it's absolutely insane it's really easy to read and i just oh i loved it so much like i said the twist at the end and the whole time you just sat there going what am i reading what am i reading what is this oh my god but fantastic my friend who i borrowed this book from was saying that when they finished it they just went back to the beginning and read it all again and i can't blame them if i had the time i'd probably do the same thing so like i said with the last one i'm probably gonna get myself my own copy of this because i want to be able to just go yeah i want some madness in my life i want to read this again and 
it's one of those things I can like possibly just read before I go to bed if I just want something. I was about to say if I want something chill, but want something familiar, I guess. <laughs> because most of the books on my shelf are not short and therefore are not easily digestible, but despite the madness of this book, it is quite digestible. Part 3, In Praise of Shadows. Translated by Thomas J. Harper and Edward G. Seidensticker. Apologies for mispronunciation of names there. Once again, we are moving in a different direction. This being a non-fiction book with Tanazaki basically exploring aesthetic with the main focus being on light and shadow, but also generally looking at traditional sort of Japanese, let's say, architecture and other design versus more Western design that by this point in time, Japan had been doing a lot of borrowing of, specifically American. This is one of those books where I just wish I spoke the original language. I wish I spoke Japanese. I wish I didn't need translators. I wish I could take in all of the little nuances. For a start, there's just a real poetry to this book. It just... And I'm never going to be able to see that as it's meant to be, as it originally was. Also, there's a lot of cultural discussion here that I'm never going to be able to fully tap into. And I just, I wish I could. I wish I could get there. But I'm always going to be missing something, you know? There's such a warmth to this book, a coziness found in darkness rather than a fear of it and I think that's quite refreshing honestly and also he's absolutely right holding a warm bowl of soup in your hands is exactly like holding a newborn baby I believe the phrase he uses is a plump newborn baby and yes gold does look good in a dimly lit room where it just has this chance to shine now look i know this quote is incredibly long it spans like half a page in the book i think well it goes over two pages but like if you add it together it comes up to about half a page but i'm gonna read it anyway and you have no choice but to indulge me because this is my channel so And surely you have seen, in the darkness of the innermost rooms of these huge buildings to which sunlight never penetrates, how the gold leaf of a sliding door or screen will pick up a distant glimmer from the garden, then suddenly send forth an ethereal glow, a faint golden light cast into the enveloping darkness, like the glow upon the horizon at sunset. In no other setting is the gold quite so exquisitely beautiful. You walk past, turning to look again, and yet again, and as you move away, the golden surface of the paper glows even more deeply, changing not in a flash, but growing slowly, steadily brighter, like the colour rising in the face of a giant. Or again you may find that the gold dust of the background, which until that moment had only a dull, sleepy luster, will, as you move past, suddenly gleam forth as if it had burst into flame. Stunning. God. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful. I will say, look, this is still a Tanazaki book, so his deviance still makes it in there, right? <laughs> Listen, this man kind of generally but very specific loved one man from no theatre of the time good for him, I guess. Like, <laughs> especially the hands and the lips, but really, really focusing on the hands. So read into that what you will. <laughs> but despite the occasional glimpses of his also, I'm not calling him being into men as a deviant. Like, if you see any of the other stuff that he's ever written about, he is deviant. That's just him being thirsty on main. <laughs> and the thirstiness and the deviance aside, this is still an incredibly beautiful book. I would say it is a book to savour, you know? I will be on the lookout for more Tanazaki because 
even though he's kind of weird, I find his book I find his books incredibly intriguing. And from what I hear, the friend I have borrowed these from does have more and has given me a few titles to be on the lookout for in general. So I will be having a look-see, including the collection of short stories where all the really weird stuff is. So that's going to be exciting, and you get to watch me probably have a breakdown on camera again. Which, you know, that happens when I read weird books, bad books. I mean, the thing is, it's probably not going to be a bad book, it's probably just going to be incredibly weird. So, there's that. Now, why don't you let me know if you've ever read anything by Tanizaki and have your opinions let me know in the comments or let me know if there are any bits of classic fiction that you've read because you had the idea that has been presented to you the kind of sanitized version and then you read it and were like this is nothing like how people presented it to me did you still enjoy it knowing that or was it did, was it something that ruined it for you let me know in the comments below feel free to like feel free to subscribe feel free to share this video and show it to your nan i hope you have had and i hope you will have a wonderful day a wonderful night a wonderful whenever you are watching this take good care of yourselves right